on Christ alone, our chief cornerstone, no other foundation can we build upon, not philosophy, nor the wisdom of man, all other ground is sinking sand. Upon this rock you build your church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. When we Proclaim your truth, and in Jesus' name, we will not fail, never fail. Oh, oh he's building a church now, 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 now. Crucified. Raised up from the dead, let captivity captive, it is finished. Oh, he gave us our keys, his authority, now we are joined. Hello everyone, welcome to another week of HTBB Youth. If you're not familiar where we are at right now, in case you don't recognize this place, this is HTBB Church. I know some of you are first time in youth. Uh, your first time in youth was when we moved online. So here's just to show you a little bit about what church looks like. We are at a lot 10 rooftop. In case you forget, forgot what it looks like. Now let's go and see our old youth hall okay you ready for this it's been a while it's been like a year and a half no more than a year and a half ish let's have a look Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our all still standing youth hall. Not sure if you remember this space. Obviously, there's uh, quite a few junk here. Uh, it's not junk, it's actually somebody's house. It's a bay. It's like furniture. Hmm, interesting. It's Jesus. I don't know. Anyways, this is what our hall looks like. This is where the older youth will normally meet or when we do a combined youth service together. And let's go and see the younger youth. Well, 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 younger youth, this is your room. Obviously, it's now the place where Food Bank make their inventories, keep their inventories. As you can see, uh, younger youth. Like, we've got bicycle for you. Like, waiting for your return. And for some of you, we've got pram as well. Like, just in case, you know, you want to feel like home a little bit. I'm just kidding. 
But this is where you guys would normally meet younger youth boys and girls. You know, we are still haven't yet figured out how we are going to come back, when we are going to come back. But hey, just want you to know that soon, hopefully, we are looking at SOPs. You're waiting for clear instructions from the government and also from the diocese to know when is the best time to bring you guys together. Uh, factors to consider about vaccination, SOPs. We are all in intense conversation right now because we really want to have you back soon. But anyways, that's just a little bit of update and what it looks like here at HTBB. Right now, we are going to move into a time of worship. And uh, right after worship, uh, we have Feng coming to speak to us. So let me pray and let's worship together. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that we can still worship you, even though we are not in this physical church, but church is who we are and who you have called us to be. So as we gather together on this online platform to worship, we invite your presence to come right now, Holy Spirit, as we lift up your name in worship. In Jesus' name, amen. That's worship. everyone for leaning in worship together right now i'm seated by the baptism pool in case you haven't seen where the baptism pool is it's right at the cafe area also have a cafe where you can get like juices coffee or tea or whatnot and right opposite of the baptism area check this out this is like an amazing view you got a view of the tower there you go 
how cool was that? Again, we can't wait to have you back in our physical service. We're still figuring things out. But today, I am excited that we have Feng who's going to speak to us what it means to be a man after God's own heart or a person after God's own heart. And uh, but before I pass the time to Feng, let's start our service with an ice breaker game. Hey HTBB youth, it's good to be here again. If we have not met, my name is Feng. Today we'll discover together what it means to be after God's own heart. So let's discuss right now, what does it mean to be after God's own heart?
For those of you who grew up in Sunday school or CHTBB, do you remember who God say is a man after his own heart? If you know the answer, I would like you to put it in the chat right now. The chat should be here or maybe here. Okay, I'm going to give you a few clues. Well, this man, he looked after ships when he was young. He became a king at some point of his life. Mm, one more clue. A lot of his writings can be found in the book of Psalms. If you guess David, you are right. Well done. If you do not know who David is, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of him. You can read about all this in detail in 1 Samuel chapter 16 onwards, 2 Samuel and 1 King in the Bible. David was the youngest of the children of Jesse. To be exact, he was actually the eighth after seven brothers. He was clearly not the most favoured by his dad because his dad didn't even bother asking David to be one of the candidates um, when Prophet Samuel wanted to anoint a king. Until Prophet Samuel asked, Are these all the sons you have? Then Jesse called for David. And David was actually tending the sheep uh, when his dad called for him. Uh, so he was a shepherd boy. But God has a greater plan for him. God has chosen him to be the king of Israel to lead God's people. But he didn't become a king overnight after he met the prophet Samuel who anointed him to be king. David became an armor bearer for the king at that time, King Saul. And he also played the liar for uh, the king because his playing would relieve the king when the king is tormented by an evil spirit. His prominence came about when David killed Goliath. You've probably heard the stories many times in uh, Sunday school or you've heard the story somewhere. And the amazing thing is David killed this two meters tall or over two meters tall Goliath, the giant with just one sling and one stone. Well, David did that because he was angry at this giant for two things. First, this giant defied Israel, his nation. Secondly, David was angry at this giant because this giant defied his God. However, David didn't rely on armor, you know, heavy armor or war strategy to kill this giant. He went into the battlefield with what he knew, his shepherd skill. And then he went there with humility as well. He relied on God. And he went onto the battlefield with righteousness. He was not okay with someone defying his God. From then on, God granted David success. David became a general, winning battles and gaining fame and favor from the people of Israel. But King Saul started feeling jealous towards David and King Saul hunted him. King Saul wanted to kill David. David ran and waited in the wilderness for 13 long years. 
And it is during this time of running away and hiding, we saw David's true character. There were multiple opportunities for David to kill King Saul, but he didn't. Despite Saul's evil, David simply trusted that God would deliver him and raise up a king to lead his people. At the end of 1 Samuel, we see that Saul eventually took his own life. In 2 Samuel, David experienced success and God's blessings. The Israelite tribes were unified and they all asked David to be their king. David then conquered the city of Jerusalem and made it the capital city. He went on and won many more battles and expanded the territory, brought the Ark of the Covenant, which represented God's presence and glory in the Old Testament, into Jerusalem and made it the religious capital. God then made a promise, a very important promise, to David in 2 Samuel 7, that through David's royal line, he will bring forth a king that will establish an eternal kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And it is through this kingdom that God will bless all nations as promised to Abraham in Genesis 12. Today, we know that this promise is fulfilled in Jesus. However, when all things were going well with David, it took a sharp turn in his life. David was hanging around on the rooftop when he was supposed to be at the battlefield with his fellow armies. He was walking around his rooftop and he saw a woman named Bathsheba showering. He gave in to temptation and eventually got her pregnant. To make matters worse, he tried to cover it up by murdering Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, and then marrying Bathsheba. The prophet Nathan then confronted David of his wrongdoings and his sin. And David immediately owned it up and asked God for forgiveness. God forgave David. However, David still had to face the consequences of his sin that led to his family and kingdom falling apart. And after the whole family failed and the death of David's son Absalom, there was finally some peace and tranquility. Of course, there were some issues in between. He then passed his throne to Solomon, his son, before he died. And in one of, last, uh, one of David's last words, he praised God. Well, we see in David's life that he wasn't perfect, far from it. Actually, he was a man with many flaws. But he is still called a man after God's own heart. Why do you think David was still called a man after God's own heart, despite his many sins? Let's discuss.
David was called a man after God's own heart surely wasn't for his appearance or height because in the Bible in 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 um, the Bible says the Lord does not look at the things people look at people look at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart but God testified concerning him in Acts 13 verse 22 I have found David son of Jesse a man after my own heart he will do everything I want him to do well, I would like to make three observations on why God called him a man after his own heart. You too can learn from this if you want to be a person after God's own heart. The first one, obedience to God. David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and obeyed God's instructions. In 1 Samuel 24, David was running away from Saul during that time. David and his son were David and his men were in a cave. And Saul happened to go in there to relieve himself. David could have killed Saul that instant, but he didn't. Instead, he rebuked his men and said, you shouldn't attack Saul because he is the anointed king of God. Not once, but twice David spared Saul's life when David refused to kill Saul nor let his men attack Saul. The second time was when David went into Saul's tent and Saul was fast asleep, alone. He could easily just take Saul's life. Even though Saul was mean to David, David obeyed the Lord and he returned evil with good. He showed mercy to Saul and honored the Lord. Secondly, perseverance and trust in God. Even in times of distress, such as running away from Saul's hunt for David, David persevered and trusted that the Lord would deliver him. Therefore, he didn't take matters into his, into his own hands. David wrote um, many psalms. Um, psalms are poems, songs, prayers about his situation and his trust in God. In Psalms 52, David wrote about his distress when Doeg the Edomite told Saul where David was hiding. David was angry and he vented his frustration to God in a psalm and he proclaimed his faith in God. Psalms 52 verse 5 to 9 says, Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin. He will snatch you up and pluck you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you saying, Here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. He was referring to Doeg. And then he said this about himself, But I am like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name for your name is good. And in Psalms 18, David wrote of God's faithfulness after he was delivered from Saul. Psalms 18, 16 verse 24. From on high, God reached down and grabbed me. He took me out of all that water. God saved me from my powerful enemy. Saved me from my foes who were too much for me. They came at me on the very day of my distress, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out to wide open spaces. He put me out safe because He is pleased with me. And thirdly, repentance. David sinned against the Lord by making Bathsheba pregnant as mentioned earlier. God sent prophet Nathan to rebuke David and David immediately admitted to his sin. 2 Samuel 12 verse 13 David said, I have sinned against the Lord. It was not just a spur of moment of remorse, um, of guilt. Nor was David afraid that Nathan would tell the whole world and expose David. But it was true and sincere repentance from David. David wrote Psalms 51 after he was convicted of his sin. As I read these Psalms, why don't you take a moment as well now to bring before the Lord any sin or things which is not right before God? Then you can echo this psalm in your heart that is read out. Psalm 51 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. David was not ashamed to confess his sin, ask for forgiveness, and repent. Let us discuss right now what are some practical ways that you can be after God's own heart in your lives. David was very much like us today, not perfect. 
He was a man after God's own heart. And so can we. We can follow David's example and be after God's own heart too. Here are some examples of practical steps that you can take to follow after God's own heart. Number one, read the Bible and obey it. Making Bible reading habit helps us to understand God's way and because God's way is always the best way. We can be confident in keeping it and obeying them. Set aside 10 minutes at least to do your Bible devotion from the Holy Bible app or the Youth Bible in one year which is available on app and Spotify. I hope you have been keeping your uh, keeping to your T10 habits. Secondly, pray and persevere. Like David, he didn't abandon God when life became tough. Where we go and what we cling to during tough times show the things which we value. For David, it was God. He stayed close to God and prayed, just like how we saw in Psalms earlier. You can journal your prayers like David too. Number three, repent regularly. We are not perfect and God knows that. If we are willing to confess our sins to God, He promises that He will be faithful to forgive them. To learn more about repentance, stay tuned for HTBB Youth Online next week as we have a couple of youth and campus students who will be teaching us on that. And as we close, let us pray and ask God what are some ways that we can take to be after His own heart. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for HTBB Youth. I thank you for speaking to us through your word and through the story of David on how to be a person after your own heart. I pray that even as we go on with our daily lives, we will follow the ways which will make us a person after your own heart. Help us to keep to them, O Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Feng, for speaking to us today. Hey, can we just show our appreciation and just thank Feng in the chat or, you know, put up some emojis inside there. We so appreciate you speaking to us, Feng. And hey, hope you guys were ministered. Hope that you felt God was speaking to you. One thing I noticed across this last few weeks, we engaged with different speakers in our facilitators team. And we realized there was a common theme that came across and none of them was aware of what, what was uh, really going on. So beginning with Brianna, she talked a little bit about repentance, what that meant. And then uh, Doreen spoke to us about purification last week, if you remembered at youth. And today, Feng spoke to us about being a person after God's own heart. And one of it is repentance. So repentance can be a very strange term for some of us, especially if you're new to youth or new to the Christian faith. And uh, I'm just very excited to announce that next week, there's going to be a youth and campus collaboration together where some of the campus students are joining us and going to speak to us on what is repentance? What does it mean? And how can we practically go on an attitude and have a heart posture of repentance? It's going to be an exciting week next week. Make sure you bring your friend along. Come turn up next week. We're going to meet here on Church Online. Same time, 11.30 a.m. Same day. And until then, take care. See you guys. Bye-bye.